Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Osello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Today I am going to cover entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve. The dorsal scapular nerve is a nerve that is located in the upper body. It transmits nerve signals from cervical nerve root C it is the motor innervation for the levator scapular muscle and for the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. Anatomically, the dorsal scapular nerve is a direct link between the mid and lower cervical spine to the mid thoracic region. The dorsal scapular nerve arises from either one of two places. It can be directly from the anterior rami of cervical nerve root number C5, or it can arise from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus, either one of those two. It travels obliquely through the middle scaling muscle without innervating. Entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve can be an acute condition or it can be a chronic condition. It can have a traumatic onset or it can have an insidious onset. When it has a traumatic onset, it's usually due to some type of contact, could be from a contact sport, a uh, direct blow to the nerve is usually how injuries to nerves occur in a traumatic fashion. In the insidious onset, it is usually caused by hypertrophy of the middle scaling muscle. Because remember I said the nerve goes through the middle scaling muscle on its way to innervating the levator scapular muscle and the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. So what happens is if there's hypertrophy of the middle scaling muscle, if it gets so big, it closes down on the space that the nerve goes through and it traps that nerve. So this condition is common or I shouldn't say common, but this condition occurs more in athletes who have big, thick neck muscles like football players, weightlifters, bodybuilders, and also athletes who do overhead activities because the scaling muscles are constantly being used to help to control motion of the rib cage and of the neck while the shoulder motions are being used. They are assisting in those motions or they are stabilizing in those motions. So the scaling muscles are getting used a great deal. So they start to get tight and they cause entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve. The symptoms of the dorsal scapular nerve are pain and stiffness in the lower part of the neck. The neck is called the cervical spine in medical terminology and pain and stiffness in the upper mid back area. The mid back is called the thoracic spine in medical terminology. This pain and stiffness in the mid back is usually in between the shoulder blades. There can also be weakness in the muscles that are innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. I'm gonna say it one more time. It's a levator scapular muscle and the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major. So it can be weakness in those muscles. Also, if it is long standing, there can be atrophy in those three muscles. So there can be weakness from the entrapment in the muscles that, inter I'm sorry, that are innervated by this nerve. And if it's long standing, there can be atrophy in those muscles. Also, there can be abnormal motion in the cervical spine and the thoracic spine in the scapula and in the shoulder. Okay, because you think about these muscles, they help to move the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the shoulder blades. So there can be abnormal motion in that area. If there's weakness in the muscles that are innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, the scapula can have an abnormal type of motion. The levator scapula muscle, what it does, it helps to elevate the scapula. If that muscle is weak, the scapula can become depressed. The rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor, they help to protract the scapulas. So if those muscles are weak, the scapulas are going to be protracted, so they'll be pulled forward. Again, the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor retract the scapulas. They pull the scapulas towards the spine. So if there is an impingement or an entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve and those muscles are not working properly, the shoulder blades, they will be in a protracted position. They can be pulled forward. Also, another symptom of entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve can be pain or numbness tingling in the posterior lateral part of the shoulder, upper arm, and 
for a good way to view your scapular motion is by doing a push-up and have someone monitor your scapular motion or have them take a picture so you could look at it yourself if you have weakness or pain or an injury and you can't do a push-up then do it up against the wall and you will see your scapular motion if there is entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve most likely there's going to be weaning of the scapula scapulas are going to be in a protracted position they will be pulled away from the spine so you'll be able to see that when you are doing a wall push-up there is an insidious onset of a dorsal scapular nerve entrapment there are obviously contributing factors there are extrinsic contributing factors which are outside of the body things that we're doing in our training and there are intrinsic contributing factors that are causing this condition the intrinsic cervical factors are ones that are inside the body the extrinsic cervical factors usually are too much training they are a strength imbalance where maybe these muscles in the front are being used too much and they're getting so strong that they're pulling the person forward like this or they're pulling the neck down or they're pulling the shoulders forward so it's causing entrapment at the middle scalene muscle or there is just an activity where maybe we're practicing over and over again and you're doing it too much and it starts to create a strength imbalance so you have to make sure that you have a balanced routine with your exercises that you are working the muscles in the front and the muscles in the back basically you're working the opposing muscles equally so you want to make sure that you do that and then when we talk about the intrinsic factors okay, hypertrophy of the muscles if those muscles are getting overdeveloped we want to make sure again that you work the opposing muscles and you want to make sure that you stretch the muscles that you're working we're not talking about training to be a contortionist what I'm talking about is stretching to reduce muscle tension hold a static stretch at a mild comfortable position and will help to decrease muscle tension so we want to eliminate the extrinsic factors and the intrinsic factors that cause this condition if symptoms should occur or you think you're getting this condition something just doesn't feel quite right please see a medical professional all right this is the disclaimer part of the video okay please do not think that watching this video takes the place of seeing a medical professional please do not try to self-diagnose yourself because there are other conditions that are similar that may be causing these symptoms may be a much worse pathology than a nerve entrapment so you want to make sure you go to a medical professional go to a doctor of chiropractic and we work with nerve entrapment conditions all the time and get an evaluation and get treatment get that diagnosis so it sets you on your proper path to recovery i am a doctor of chiropractic this is a condition that i've seen in my office but please do yourself a big favor get a professional medical person to evaluate your condition to do whatever type of exam is necessary to give you the proper diagnosis and the treatment do not try to self-diagnose yourself please see a medical professional for evaluation and treatment as a doctor of chiropractic and entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve is a condition that i've seen in my office it is a condition where often if there's not that trauma obviously it is that insidious onset people don't quite understand what's going on at first they start to feel a little bit of pain and then that function just isn't there the way that it should be and then all of a sudden something's just not moving right they're feeling weak that is a serious pathology this is something nerve entrapment conditions are things that I see in my office all the time so go to a doctor of chiropractic and get your professional treatment doctor of chiropractic will help to lessen the entrapment on the nerve obviously the nerve entrapment is the subject of this class that I'm going over but it is also the source of this condition so get an evaluation by a doctor of chiropractic then get treatment so that the impingement the entrapment of that dorsal scapular nerve is removed and the proper nerve signal from the brain going down through the dorsal scapular nerve to those muscles is correct and then what's coming back is 
Correct. Now, we all need to do some self-treatment. You all need to take charge of your condition. If you have gotten your, your diagnosis and your professional treatment, you always want to do things at home to help you progress, to help you recover and rehabilitate this injury. Obviously, what the doctor finds on his evaluation is going to be much more specific than what I'm going to go over here. So once you get to your evaluation, you find out exactly what you will need to do. But some of the things that will most likely you will need to do is stretching the neck, stretching the scalene muscles. That will help you a great deal if those muscles are tight. If there is hypertrophy in those muscles, stretching those muscles will help. Doing self-massage on the scalene muscles will help. The scalene muscles are located in the front side part of the neck. Okay, they're not these muscles right in the front, but they're a little bit out to the side. So those are the scalene muscles. Do some very light massage in those areas. Very, very mild pressure. You do not have to use a great deal of pressure. Just use very mild pressure and then do some slow static stretching. When you're stretching the cervical spine, you only need to hold those stretches for about five to 20 seconds. If you start to feel pain or if it starts to increase the symptoms, then you wanna go ahead and stop. If you start to feel dizziness, you start to feel vertigo, you start to just feel, don't feel quite right, then go ahead and stop. You never wanna do any type of exercise, stretching or strengthening that either intensifies symptoms or elicits symptoms. Other things you can do is do strengthening exercises for the rhomboid major, the rhomboid major minor and the levator scapular muscle. So you can do exercises where you are pulling the shoulder blades backwards or you're performing retraction of the scapula. Very important fact about a nerve injury for any type of nerve, if it is a impingement, if it's an entrapment of any of the nerves, the more mild the impingement, the more mild the compression or entrapment on that nerve, in most cases, the, usually the faster you will recover. And also, the shorter the duration of the entrapment, in most cases, usually the faster you will recover. So please take action immediately. If you start to notice something is not feeling quite right, if you start to feel pain, you start to feel any of the symptoms that I described, please take action. Do not hesitate and get your professional evaluation and start yourself treatment. Recovery of a nerve condition also is usually faster and more complete if you modify or you decrease or you cease the contributing activity. Whatever activity that is, you need to modify it and use proper technique or you need to do less of that activity or you need to just eliminate that activity. Thank you everybody for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. Again, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance, and Minimize Injuries. If you have questions about the book, you can go to my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can see more information on the book. You can also go to the Amazon page on the book. Just go to Donald A. Ozello, DC, or you can go to the book. Just type in the name, again, Running, Maximize Performance, and Minimize Injuries. You'll go to the Amazon page and you could get more information on it. It is available in paperback and in ebook. So again, I want to thank you for viewing today's episodes. Please feel free to like this video. Also, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Once a week, I publish a show called Two Minutes of Anatomy, and then once a week, I also publish Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. So please subscribe to my YouTube page, and always remember, Train hard, train smart, utilize nutritional strategies that work for you, stay injury free, and accomplish your goals.